Hello everybody, this is Maniac 4 Bricks, and yes, you did read the title correctly. Uh, as a quick background sort of thing, I'm not going to make this the entire video, but um, I'm Roman Catholic. That is a religion I practice, I don't impose that on anybody, it's just something I do on my personal uh, life outside of YouTube. And with that, there is a season of Lent, which is usually around this time, where I would be giving up something that is important to me, or maybe a distraction to me, to try to focus on other things. So, for this 40-day period, I will be giving up YouTube, but not all of it. I would like to cut back on a lot of different things, like watching, uh, you know, commenting, maybe being part of live streams, but it will still happen. Uh, there will definitely still be things going on through Lent that I will be on other people's channels. But, I am not going to upload videos myself. I am not going to work on recording or maybe not as much writing videos uh, in the background, whether or not it's actually shown here. I'm not going to work on live streams. I'm not going to have any published during this period. And I'm not going to have any community tab, like, updates sort of things. So if you want to catch up on updates about my stuff, I will be doing stuff through all this time, then you can check me out on Twitter, at Maniac4Bricks, or Instagram, at Maniac4BricksOfficial. With that said, a lot of this is so that I can take a break from YouTube and try to get more organized, not just in the Lego room. And you may think, why is it so important to clean here? Well, a lot of things. It's easier to move around here uh, if it's a clean room, so I can like get to all the different things and make it look nice. But it's also important because Philly Brick Fest is coming up, and I would like to have all the preparations made way before the weekend actually starts. In fact, uh, Sunday, April 21st, is going to be the week before Philly starts. So when I get back from this hiatus, from this break, whatever you want to call it, there will be videos coming out, and there will be Philly Brickfest, where there will be even more videos coming out, and live streams, so it's really not going to be that bad. I think it's going to be a welcome return. With that said, um, I still have a lot of things I have to prep for Philly, and I'll share some of them in this video. Uh, one thing I do want to mention before I get into that, I do have a couple of new things that are now added to the channel. If you check on the About section of the channel page, you will see a few more new links, and I've also tweeted them out on uh, Twitter. So, I have now started up a Teespring store. I know previously I did Redbubble, but I've been recommended to do a Teespring store, as many people are already familiar with that. They do have some good quality products, and I will have a bunch of products that will go that way. Uh, some things are up there right now, so you can check a look, and I will be updating that in the near future. And a lot of them are different designs that I've had, and uh, a few new ones that are coming out soon. Some of them might be inside jokes from the channel that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys. Yes, the three-hour waffle will finally be made as a merchandise. Sour Apple Cannon will also be a merchandise item, and you can have that printed on a whole bunch of things. It doesn't have to just be t-shirts. That's the the other thing, uh, t-shirts specifically, I've been able to adjust the price for them so that it's not that bad for buying the t-shirts. I know sometimes, uh, I usually give Hot Topic for this kind of flack of a t-shirt being $20, it's like, it just feels a little bit much, and especially when I've seen it cheaper else places, uh, even Target or whatever, so I kind of went in the same mentality with Teespring with that. So I adjusted some prices of things, there are no higher than what the average price is for what um, the Teespring stores offer for every single item. And some of them will be lower, so that'll be a lot easier for you guys to pick up. Um, if you if you see something that doesn't seem right and needs a little bit of modification, just let me know on the social media that I mentioned before. It will also be in the description below. And with that, I also have another new thing. Uh, it's actually been around for quite some time. I just haven't really done anything with it, but it's now recently been updated. I finally have the Patreon page moving. So before, it was really just a $1 tier, get some updates here and there sort of thing, but I didn't really uh, expand upon that. And I did want to do that at some point. So now, there are a couple of new tiers that are added to Patreon, and they just basically helping with some of the last preparations that I need for Philly Breakfast. There is even one entitled Philly Fund, and um, it's kind of a, you know, taking viewer requests sort of thing. So it, as part of that tier, uh, you'll be able to request me to do a certain kind of video, may or may not involve collaboration, may or may not be filmed at Philly Breakfast, just to try to um, give something back to you guys. If you want to actually see some kind of content with it, you know, some good reason and following, you know, terms of the place I'm at, 
YouTube and all that other stuff, then you have that opportunity. Like, if you're waiting for something for me to do, this will be the time for it. And, like I said, a lot of these fundraising things are going towards Philly Brickfest preparation. So there's still parts I still need to get for certain mocks, uh, preparations I need to make for hotel reservations and things like that. Like, it's reserved, but, you know, like, having a little extra cash for everyday, uh, you know, activities. Like, you know, eating. <laughs> Gonna eat while I'm at Philly Brickfest, like I would anywhere else. So now we'll get into a couple Philly preparations that I've made thus far, and hopefully some plans for near uh, future ones, now that I'll be out of YouTube. And I will have some updates about these kinds of things also on social media. Not too long ago, I placed three Bricklink orders for Sig Fig parts. And uh, when this is all done, and the other order comes in, I should have 60 copies of my Sig Fig available. Some of these I will actually keep for my own purposes, so I could have different expressions for them, you know, take different photos here and there. But a lot of them are going to Philly Brickfest for the opportunity for Sig Fig trades. If I meet new people there, and they have copies of those Sig Fig, then these will be nice to have as a way of exchanging with other LEGO fans. And and I do have one or two that will be sent out in the mail for people who can't make it to Philly Brickfest and may or may not be able to see at Brick Fair Virginia. So that'll be great. I will say, though, um, some of these may have some variances between them just by the condition of the parts. So this one, for example, is a little more faded on the torso, but it still covers, you know, the main design of it. Uh, most of these will actually have reddish brown hair instead of old brown, but I don't think that's a big deal. It's still pretty close. Dark bluish gray instead of dark gray pants, that is also the same thing. And this has also been the case with other Sig Figs I've traded with other people before. I did notice in this particular Bricklink order, they had standard grin heads, but they had two variances of them. And this is something I know Bricksar has talked about before on his channel. The standard grin head, the classic one that everybody knows from like Classic Space and older LEGO minifigures... There are lots of different types of them. So there's a solid block on top of here, which is its own Bricklink code. There is a open one with like little divots in there uh, to breathe through. And the that has its own Bricklink code. And then there are ones that are over here, which are a little more squarish. They don't have as much for round edges on the ends of the head, which is also its own Bricklink code. So I still have to contact my Bricklink seller to let them know about this difference of parts. I do want to try to have most of them at the rounded heads, but if I need to, I'll make the accommodations with the square ones. Hopefully it's not a big deal, and I don't think it's going to stress the parts too much, but just wanted to make that aware. In terms of Lego mocks that I will be bringing to Philly Brickfest, it's nothing that hasn't been shown on the channel before or hasn't been at conventions before. I do know that I didn't make a video yet for the uh, Breakfast Club mock and the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show mocks that I made last year for Philly. I will get to those eventually for making videos and uploading uh, what that looks like for those who didn't go to the conventions. But uh, as far as brand new mocks, this is my main project. I do have other ideas, but I want to get this one at minimum done for Philly Breakfast. This is my Lego pop-up store from the holiday season 2018. I do not work there anymore. I'm not asked by Lego to create this. It was completely my own design and um, my own you know, research in trying to get all of these things pretty accurately to each other. It will not be sharing any information about the back room of the store. It is simply the public view and all the shelves and a lot of customers through here. There will be several LEGO employees through here as well. Not much has changed since the last time I made a video about it. A little bit more work has been done in making the shelves themselves. We even have the wobbler tags hanging off of there. Um, I will have some printed or rather stickered pieces around for the Lego sets themselves, as you saw from other Lego store looking sets, like the VIP one or the one that's available in the Lego stores. This play area has been updated a little bit, so we have different buckets and tables around there, as well as little scattered parts for the uh, the dump bins, as they're known, the you know extra surplus of sets, but also nicer to, to get it a little cheaper. And then this... This I made a while ago. It's kind of a mosaic design of some of the signage around the store. The store is categorized in not only by color, but also by age range for the store I worked at. So this would be about 2 and up. This was 5 and up, 7 and up, and then 10 and up for the age ranges of LEGO sets. And the colors also help with that. So these are the signs that will be appearing on the shelves when you're looking at everything to know where it is and what it means. 
I have those made, but have, not much has been done since then. But um, from this point, it's basically just working on the store shelves, making the colors look right, having it full of Lego products, having minifigures in here, and then wrapping up the... Uh, the counter area towards the front. That is the main mock I want to work on for Philly Brick Fest. If that's the only one I bring that's brand spanking new, that's fine. If I have time after that, I hope to work on a couple other LEGO mocks I've been planning for some time, including but not limited to a quote-unquote UCS version of the Minifigure Factory promo from 2018, the one where you have all these micro figures on a little assembly line. I want to try to make a larger version of that, but that's only going to happen after this is done. For those attending Philly Brick Fest, I will have a special thing I'll do on the side. It's not going to be a proper setup by the displays or anything, but I will have the opportunity, if people would like, to see the first LEGO video game ever made. This is LEGO Fun to Build from 1995 for the Sega Pico. Kind of obscure for the game itself, also obscure for the system, but we'll have more information about that. And uh, that will be uh, my own setup, not sponsored by Philly Breakfast or anything like that. It's just wherever I can set up all the equipment for it. And more than just that equipment, it will also have its own TV, so all good there. I have done this previously with Shock Culture Con, where I had that as a display item. People seem to enjoy it, and I thought this would be great to bring to Philly Breakfast. I will also be happy to bring along some LEGO board games at the request of people attending the event. So I have a lot that could definitely be gone through, some that may be hard to find for people or just would be interesting to try out that haven't been tried out before. Uh, a lot of different board games, I think there's one or two DVD games in here, there are several chess sets that I have, including the Designed By Me exclusive, the uh, iconic chess set that I got not too long ago, and then the Pirates one I have somewhere else as well. So if you would like me to bring some of these, we could just have it as a tabletop thing outside of convention hours, let me know and I will be happy to share them. Alright, it has been discussed among a few LEGO fans and I, but I will announce it here that I will be bringing these also to Philly Breakfast. These, I, I, this one I've actually used at Philly Breakfast a few years ago, and uh, some people still find it interesting. Perhaps a little creepy, but, you know, fun all the same. This one I've had for quite some time, like years and years, like pretty much when it came out, um, from Bionicle that might be fun to share with people. Also, I may or may not be wearing my Dipper hat and or uh, a Dipper related outfit. And yes, just like last year, we will have daily vlogs about Philly Brickfest. They'll normally be uploaded a day after it was recorded, so day one footage will be recorded during day two, you know, that sort of thing. Um, hopefully not too much long after, because I think I might have missed a day from last year I didn't upload yet, oops. But I think it'll be a lot of fun nonetheless. It'll be good to collaborate with other people, maybe have them in the background in some videos, or just fun activities that were shared throughout Philly Breakfast 2019. Once again, I'd like to say that if you want to follow any of these updates as things are going along through the month of March and April, just check on my social media at Maniac4Bricks on Twitter and at Maniac4Bricks Official on Instagram. I may appear on some people's live streams in the near future, but that's only as a guest. I am not the one hosting the stream. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I apologize for our long length, but I still wanted to get a lot of information out to you as soon as I could and once things started moving. Uh, there will also be more updates as far as the Teespring and Patreon pages, so check it back for that again through the social media or on the appropriate pages. All links are in the description. Have a great day and enjoy the season.